From fast food chains to fancy restaurants, plant-based imitation meat is suddenly showing up everywhere. These products are the work of scientists and they are hailed for providing an ethical alternative to animal protein. But with the soaring popularity of mock meat, it's also fallen under heightened scrutiny. What's the story with fake meat? Can it live up to its promise? Our Sunday special report investigates. It sizzles as it's cooked in a pan. This restaurant has rolled out burgers that smell, look and taste like the real thing, but that contain 0% meat. They're made entirely from plant-based ingredients. It upends all the stereotypes about fake meat. This patty made using plant-based proteins has soared to popularity because it's nearly indistinguishable from real meat. Plant-based meat appeared on the scene in 2009 with the founding of a U.S.-based startup. The company received investment from Microsoft founder Bill Gates and actor Leonardo DiCaprio. Two years later, other startups began to develop plant-based proteins. They got fast food chains on board to introduce customers to the future of meat. Follows the same path that the plant-based beverage market uh, followed. You'd see it growing from roughly 13 billion, uh, 14 billion dollars today, up to potentially over 40 billion dollars over the next decade. With the backing of celebrities and marketing of fast food chains, the commercial opportunities seem endless for artificial meat, and its advocates claim it can save the planet. Due to global warming, the polar caps are melting and the sea level is slowly rising. With many countries facing the threat of the rising seas, the world is slowly waking to the seriousness of climate change and to the causes of global warming. Scientists have discovered that, aside from the impact of the petroleum and fossil fuel industry, emissions from the large number of cattle across the planet play a huge role in global warming. Cows are the third greatest source of greenhouse gases on Earth. Cows are actually the largest producer of CO2. Today, there are about 1.5 billion cows worldwide. The CO2 that those cows collectively exhale accounts for more than 10% of greenhouse gases. Since cows are ruminants, they have four stomachs. These four stomachs continuously break down cellulose. After the food ferments, that is, after the cow digests it, it produces methane and nitrous oxide that also accounts for 8% of greenhouse gases. Furthermore, the greenhouse effect caused by methane is much, much greater than that caused by CO2. Half a pound of beef causes as much greenhouse gas to be emitted as driving 55 of these cars for one mile. Producing one kilogram of beef results in 36 kilograms of CO2. To put that in perspective, one tree can absorb only 0.03 kilograms of CO2 a day. This means that for every kilogram of beef we eat, we need 1,213 trees to absorb the carbon produced. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions from cattle, one European startup developed an animal feed additive that it claims can cut methane emissions by up to 30 percent. But this approach comes with legal issues and cost considerations. Some scientists also argue the additive would treat the symptoms but not the root cause of the problem. The most direct solution to the problem, they say, would be for people to give up eating meat or to simply pretend to be eating meat. As everyone can see, roughly 25% of the world's meat product companies are working on adding plant-based foods to their product line. The largest meat product manufacturers around the world, including U.S.-based companies Tyson Foods, Hormel Foods and Nestle, are slowly turning their focus toward the development of plant-based meat products. There is only one goal for food companies, and that's to give the consumer the right sensation. Only with this approach can companies work out how to make an unbelievable emulation of meat. 
It's how they can balance flavor with nutritional value and create something that's good for the planet. Taiwan, which is world-renowned as a food lover's paradise, isn't being left behind as the world shifts toward meat alternatives. At this laboratory in Xizhi district, a researcher holds the secret ingredient of delicious imitation meat, soybean dregs. We started out wanting to find a commercial use for drags produced by the soybean industry in Taoyuan's Daxi district. We wanted to find a solution for Daxi, which produces 700,000 tons of soybean drags each year. How can colorless, flavorless soybean drags be used to replicate meat? In the course of their research, these scientists found themselves repeatedly hitting a wall. We removed meat ingredients from the picture entirely and tried to create a completely plant-based product. We spent three months working on this, working on how we could take plant proteins and turn them into meat that feels like a real burger when you eat it. These dregs are flakes, and these ones are chunks. These are for adding texture to the meat patties. The red yeast rice extract is mainly for adding a meat-like color to the patties. We mix it in with the bean fibers to add color. The first in Taiwan to work on artificial meat was a food products research laboratory. This lab bears testament to 27 years evolution of artificial meat. These are our first, second, and third generation artificial meat products. In our newest, third generation meat product, you can see that the color looks very much like that of real meat. Not only that, the fibers have the same texture as that of real meat. Between 2010 and 2017, Taiwan's per capita meat consumption increased by 20 percent. With that comes an expanding carbon footprint that may find its solution in artificial meat. Taiwan's beef-loving population faces not only a decision on what to serve for dinner, but also an ethical choice. It's not just for vegetarians. More people are choosing imitation meat out of concern for the environment and animal welfare. Imitation meat has the potential to be better for the environment. But a look at its ingredients can raise the question of whether it's better for you. There are lots of additives in there. There's fat, oil, and sodium. The sodium content is actually quite high. This is all to give it strong flavor. If you eat it regularly, there's an increased risk of heart disease. Imitation meat is still far from being a perfect product. But even so, its journey from lab to table represents a massive step forward for the food and beverage industry. Absolutely, there are areas in which we're still waiting for a breakthrough. But the product's shortcomings haven't been enough to keep meat eaters away. Looking at the numbers, we can clearly see a growth curve in the market, and it's a beautiful, healthy curve. With the advancement of technology, the foods people eat are changing. Today, artificial red meat is a reality. In the future, artificial fish may appear on dinner tables too. As more alternatives reach the market, we may be able to shift our perception of meat and to change how we treat the planet.